Nice. Right on. Um, we have one more question, and then we're going to go upstairs. So stick around. Zip, zippity, zip, zip. <laughs> this is this is my perfect my, time. My, this is my kid, by the way. Say hi to Ari. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Running away. And like that, <sighs> you're gone. You Brussels sprout. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local music scene and the people that make it, including me and this guy. My guest today is musician, artist, producer, freelancer, philosopher, activist, and enthusiast. Your words. He's also the drummer for Scotty Dub and Nashing, which may Guitarist. or may not... Wait, I thought you were the drummer for Nashing. Guitarist. But you are a drummer for Scotty? Yep. Cool. Sorry. <laughs> Guitarist for Nashing. Specializing in music creation, event promotion, film production, wellness, and philosophy... Please welcome to the channel, Exist More. Say hi. Happy to be here, man. How yeah, are yeah. you guys? Let me welcome you properly with some nice cold Caribbean black rum. Cheers. Welcome to the Cheers. channel. No alcohol abuse, right? Yep, no alcohol okay. abuse. Always Spend drink it. it all to the bottom. Don't neglect your alcohol. There it is. Neglect is a terrible thing. And then we chase it with, I'm chasing it with lovely Room 6 whiskey. Sponsor me. This is a room six, uh, what did you call it earlier? A white Ukrainian. A white Ukrainian, because fuck Russia. <laughs> I mean, not the Russian people. Yeah, Russian people are great, but all you know, governments That's suck. the problem, is that people can be great. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. What did they say in Men in Black? A person is smart, smart, people are stupid. stupid. Yes. <laughs> I was Panicky. literally thinking that, yes. <laughs> yep. Um, but you know what? I like your shirt. And... I'm proud of my shirt, too, but I think we can do one better. What do you think? Yeah. <gasps> Movie magic! Whoa, hold up. Who <laughs> wants to trust me? <laughs> hey, I need to speak with the producer. It was at this moment that he knew. I have a producer? <laughs> if so, I'm not paying them nearly enough. <laughs> or you're not doing your job. Um, Miss, Dude, you are. I like your shirt. Whoa. Thank you very much. So oh, I have the Exist More shirt. Yeah. Uh, can they pick this up anywhere online or just they need to go see you play somewhere? Oh, absolutely. You can actually order those from me on my website or in person. Go ahead and talk to me. And I'll me. put the website definitely down in the description. In the meantime, he has a Room Sex Rocks Summer Showcase 2022 edition at Chiba Hut shirt, which... Exclusive. Those were actually designed by me and produced by Scotty Dub. If you're a fan of the channel or the local music scene, you know who Scotty Dub is. And um, I like how he vintaged it a little bit. Also, he shout did. out to Happy Days and Envy Nails Spa for uh, sponsoring the showcase. It was a good mm. time. It was hot, but it was a good time. Yeah. And uh, mm. But yeah, I, uh, I'm quite proud of that. Moving I have, on. I have, before we move on, I have one cool thing to mention about this shirt. Oh, please. There's a reason why this shirt seems so vacant. It's literally an outline because what I want you to do with these shirts, and they come with instructions when you get one, is design it yourself. It's empty inside. So you can color it if you want to. You can color the whole outside. You can leave it exactly how it is. You can rip it up. I know lots of people like to cut off sleeves or do all types of designs on the shirt. The whole plan is... You've been talking to the cheeks. <laughs> do they do that too? The second they got some shirts from me, I said, you got any scissors? <laughs> well, then they need some of my shirts because I've had this idea for so long and I finally did it and I'm happy that these shirts are out there. There's pictures on my Instagram and my website of what people have done with these shirts. But basically, it's, it's our uh, opportunity to collaborate, really, because you get this shirt and you design it. There's hardly anything done to it. It's just the exist more there. You get to craft it from there. And yeah. what I ask you to do after that is take a picture of it to show me what you've done with it. And then wear it, take a picture while you're doing something that you love, and then send both of those pictures to me, and I'll share it online, and boom, we'll show how we collaborate together. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Special guest. It's my father-in-law. He's, he's been on the channel before, piping up with his usual 
Wisdom? Wasn't me. Yeah. Cool. Well, I, for what I picture with this is you're doing a show, you're selling them, and you've got a table with little paintbrushes in little things of paint, and pe- people can just sit there and like splatter them or whatever they mm-hmm. want with it. You'd have to really t- like cover the ground, I think, but you know, you don't, no venue wants a bunch of paint on the sidewalk or whatever. Yeah. But that being said, unless it's like, I don't know, double down. <laughs> Yeah, or maybe I could just lay a whole bunch of tarp on the ground. Like, look, venue, it's nice. gonna all end up on the tarp if it's not on the t-shirt. Nice. <laughs> um, so moving on, you once said, "With passion for self-expression, natural wellness, and philosophy, what and, and do what you are." Where did this whole mindset come from, um, and and how does it influence your your music, or does uh, it? Uh, very much so, because as I look out into the world, what I notice is the media is often used to uh, more or less hypnotize people to be something, uh-huh. but why not be yourself? So that's also part of what exist more means. is it's, it's an encouragement to exist more as who you are. Give, give the world more of you, not more of what they've already seen. Don't be a repeat of what you see on TV, repeat of what you hear in music movies you know don't be a repeat be yourself you were born into this world an authentic being so why not express more of that rather than expressing more of what's already been you know right on um i like that and i've heard it expressed a couple different ways by different people i've I've also kind of feel the same way uh and i haven't had it expressed in two words exist more but i totally get that so um it's the simplest way i could put it yeah you and i have something in common (laughs) let's hear it Money plays. Oh yeah! Shout out yeah. Mike Z. Shout out. Yes. <laughs> money plays the days. Man, that was <laughs> cheers to money plays. Is the only time R.I.P. I, but never really gone. Only time I ever have my picture in the paper performing music. In the paper, I never got into the paper for La- money Las plays. Vegas Review was there that night, and for nice. some reason, I'm the guy that they picked <laughs> the photo of because I'm going like, ah, you know, and um, but yeah, I want to see that iconic photo. Um, Honestly. You can probably see it now. There you go. So, um, it's a good photo. But I like it. it was Money Plays is still trying to do the open mic thing, I think, but it's not quite the same. Are they? I, I thought, thought Money Plays shut down. Did they? Yeah, I thought they shut down a year or two ago. I thought I saw something early, a while ago. Well, I mean, hey, if they're back open, I'll go back to that open mic because that's like the Vegas stomping grounds. And I moved out here. That was like yeah. where I first started networking with people. That was the first place I ever saw uh, the old, you know, the claw machine. And there was an actual VHS porn tape in there. <laughs> my father-in-law was I've with never seen that. My father-in-law came to watch me play and he saw that. And we just laughed. <laughs> I bet he was there. Like, you got to like, really gotta get this tape. And this was still in 2000-something. Like, you got to really want the VHS tape. If you think about it, a claw machine would be the perfect place to put a porn tape because you're already getting practice with your hand. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Good night, everybody. No, I'm just kidding. Good night, everybody. So, On that note. See, all right. So, um, I want to know, number one, let's talk earliest musical influence. That, that What is that one moment where you're like, I want to do that? Whether it was a song or a performer or, or album or what? That honestly is a difficult one for me. I'll I've always, back. yeah, the, I've you know I've always just loved music so much, and I remember even even when I was a real little kid, maybe like five, six years old, I used to just like to take like sticks or whatever the heck and just hit things. And that's why, like, drums became the first instrument that I picked up around, like, nine, ten years old. Mm-hmm. I just, I had the rhythm. I just wanted to, like, hit things, but not violently. Right. <laughs> I but I wanted to, like, hit things drums. with rhythm, you know? Yeah. But I remember uh, being uh, really particularly influenced by rock music, because my dad was really into rock music. So he would listen to, like, Black Sabbath, uh, Nazareth. Uh, for some reason, I remember, uh, do you remember the Monkees? Well, I know. The I have never heard of show. the Monkees. Although, I bet if I had heard of them, I'd be a believer. Ah, there you go. <laughs> One, two, three, go! Oh, 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 oh. This just doesn't seem to be my day. Well, hey, Have hey, I heard of the monkeys? <laughs> hey, hey, Mike Nesmith, man! <laughs> hey, hey, we're the monkeys. And people say we monkey around. <laughs> yes. <laughs> For some reason, I remember them, them a good bit. 
But I remember, uh, I don't know if anybody else was ever a kid putting on like a concert to a fake audience in their bedroom, but that yeah, was still me do as that. a child. <laughs> yeah, I still do that. My it's house. called practicing. Come yeah. on, man. <laughs> yeah, right. earliest influence, it's hard for me to pinpoint an exact one, but rock music, I'd say, was the first genre that really like welcomed me into like, whoa, this is something I, I'm into. Right on. It, it Not to be stereotypical or... or sexist or anything but it does seem to resonate with little boys of just banging on things oh yeah and that makes sense yeah i'm i can only speak for myself i can't speak for little girls or whatever but it does seem to be a thing of just i've had more than one drummer in here male presenting male say i started with pots and pans my and shout out to my parents for letting me do it you know right yeah Oh, I forgot that part. Shout out to my parents for letting me do that. <laughs> yeah. I think that, I think that makes sense in our culture. That, yeah. you know, We're you know. born creative. It Unfortunately, we have to find it again as we get older after it's been stomped out of us by various institutions or, yeah. unfortunately, some parents or, you know, authority figures. So, mm-hmm. moving on, though, to happier, happier things. Happier things. Exist more things. Yes. <laughs> some rocking things. Um... Talk to me about Area 51. Area 51. Did you, you went out there when there was, there was the whole storm Area 51 thing? And I know Scotty Dub played out there. Oh, that Area 51 thing. I As did opposed not go. to the Area 51 in Poughkeepsie? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I did not go. Oh, okay. I thought I saw something posted by you that you... No? Okay. No. You know, sometimes I kind of wish that I would have gone... But I am so happy that Scotty Dub ended up on like the cover of somebody's documentary about that. Which thing. was really freaking That cool. is an iconic photo right there. Yeah, right. If any of you have ever seen an Area 51, Storm Area 51 documentary, and there's a dude with like a space helmet, the peace sign, and like a natural light can or whatever. He's been he standing had. right here. He's been, that's Scotty Dub. With, <laughs> with Shay. And he experienced his first ever earthquake right here. There was an that's, earthquake while you guys did that? The, the day, yeah, but when Vegas had that first earthquake. Oh, man. This thing moved. I was just like, wow. I know this feeling because I grew up in California. What the hell? I'm in Vegas, you know? So uh, he had no idea what it was. And uh, I, I had to explain to him, <laughs> that's the earthquake. You see these tectonic plates. Anyway. Yeah, the first time there was an earthquake uh, since I've lived here in Vegas, I was asleep. I missed the whole freaking thing. And I had to My wife was upstairs and had laying in bed and had no yeah. idea. And then, and then the next time, I was in the show in Pahrump. I wasn't playing at the show. I was just attending, having some fun. And then all of a sudden, the whole bar just kind of <laughs> did this like soft thing for a Dude, minute. Dude, this show's rocking. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I felt nauseous for a good like 30, 45 minutes after oh, that. Yeah. And we were like, apparently that was an earthquake. Yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of my wife and earthquakes, the night we met, the earth moved. It, there was an earthquake. We met in Northern California. I met her in a bar. I met my wife dancing in a bar. You mean you moved there? Uh, you two coming down. No, no, no. That was that was <laughs> a different day. Anyway. Oh, okay. But no, we were dancing and because we were dancing, having a good time, uh, we were in Davis, California, which is not that far from Napa Valley where the earthquake was. Mm. And apparently there was an earthquake. We had no idea. But we were supposed to go to Napa Valley the next day for our first actual date. So I met her dancing in the bar. And she's like, Hey, so this happened. How about we go here instead? Right, right. <laughs> yeah, because... Um, let's avoid the red zone. Let's avoid... Yes. <laughs> um, these giant worms came out of the ground. No. <laughs> um, speaking of red zone, you moved from Illinois to Vegas, huh? Yep. Were you moved, or how old were you when you came to Vegas? That was 20... Oh, no. So you, you were not moved as like a four-year-old or whatever. What, no. what prompted the move, if I may ask? Well, uh... Or warrants? <laughs> Well, you see, the mob was hunting me. Just kidding. <laughs> My God, you would not be the first person to say that. Then I came to Vegas, and I was like, "Oh, whoops, there's mob here too." You, you would not be the first person to say that to me, in all seriousness. And be oh, like, I, "Oh, really? <laughs> do not tell." Even, not even going to ask questions because I don't yeah, want to expose I, anyone yeah, to expose we, we, themselves. Do your own <laughs> research. Um, right. But, but yeah, what what prompted the move to Vegas, though? Well, at the time, I pretty much had two options. I was either going to go to Southern Illinois to go to a college to continue my uh, my education in music. Okay. Or I was going to go to Vegas and just figure it out. And at the time, in Illinois, I was just 
so depressed because there's so much creativity in Illinois. There really is a ton. There's just a lack of motivation because there's not a lot to do in Illinois unless you make that happen yourself. And a lot of people kind of lose that motivation trying to make something happen themselves. Mm. So I saw an opportunity to move here to Las Vegas and I just took it. I was like, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but I know things happen in that city and I'm like a go and do something type of person. So I just, I moved to Vegas and just started figuring it out from there. Right on. Um, from there, I wanted to ask kind of a usual interview question, and I'm sorry in advance. I Finally, forgive you in advance. Stick around, <laughs> because the answer to this question you're going to be hearing upstairs in room six, uh, he's going to bring all sorts of cool music, so definitely stick around. Definitely follow him down in the description using the social media that I put down there. Um, how would you describe your musical style? I'm sorry. Elevator oh, pitch, go! God. All over the place. Yes, yes, it is. I swear, it's just. Let's, uh, let's list it off. My, uh, my my ears just love to hear music. Oh. You could say some of my favorite genres are like math rock, post rock. I like certain types of hip hop. I'm not a huge fan of uh, typical hip hop that you hear on the radio. Mm -hmm. I love the the artists that people refer to as like conscious artists. You know, people who like rap about cool modi. There you go. Like people who rap about their life or something uh, socio-political or spiritual, you know? Right. And so that's kind of my angle with it. So with music that I write, I often find myself doing uh, math rock, acoustic, post-rock, uh, hip-hop. Um, when it comes to jamming with other artists, I'll pretty much try anything. When it comes to just music that I'll listen to, I'll give anything a try. It just has to be an artist that like I can feel it, you know? It's got to have a feel to it. If, it. if it, to me, just seems like something that's trying to make sales or sound like everything else it just it's not appealing to me it goes in one ear out the other if it's got some heartfelt message to it some uniqueness to it then i'm about it no matter if you have two fans or two million fans then that's the style of music that i'm into so but so oftentimes you, when i write music it tends to be something about like math rock post rock acoustic or hip-hop is kind of my main genres that i write yeah having heard his stuff that's Pretty much covers it, but you prefer listening to artists versus products. Yes, that would be a good. Right, and there are those bands, there are those acts that will straddle that line, and I feel like, like Taylor Swift, Tay Tay, started out more artist, was writing all her own music, and became kind of product, but still has managed to retain a little bit of the artist in there. Uh, and then of course you got like you know the Britney Spears side of things where product, yeah. and then you have Tom Waits. You know Tom Waits. I just introduced Tom Waits to my family a couple nights ago, thanks to that little magic box over there that I won't say the name of, or else she'll kick into life. But <laughs> I was just like, uh, the new. I'm writing. I'm working on a new song actually for myself that uh, I feel a little Tom Waits with it. Only I don't smoke. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't gargle gravel. So you know, and I like to sing above, say, five decibels. <laughs> yeah. All right. Part of uh, part of the art of uh, music, especially if you want to be financially successful, I found out is uh, you get a job, right? <laughs> you get a job. <laughs> but there's also uh, um, when it comes to like the millions or even billions of dollars that cycle around like the music business, mm -hmm. you really got to remember like that's the music business that's catered to what's selling. So what's selling is not about individuals. What's selling is about the broad community. So that's why a lot of artists, like if you want to make millions or billions of dollars, there's the sellout factor. A part of you has to sell out to make that much money. But you can't be financially successful and live comfortably and still maintain your own artistic integrity. It just That's kind of the art of it. I think that's why certain artists that we see who get famous, some of them retain that and other ones don't. I think the ones that retain it were a little more... Uh, authentic and a little more like hard-headed like no i want to maintain my own artist and then the other people were like i just want the money tell me what to say in that microphone and i'm there right um, so there's like those two types oh, of oh you want you want my second album to sound just like my first one okay you're right exactly and yeah. and yeah um and i get that i can see both sides of things you know being kind of an open-minded person i can and, and also having tried going down the, that route of both both ways actually what do you want to hear and also no i'm never gonna play covers man you know that was much younger. Covers Josh. pay in Vegas. I'm just saying. Yeah, they do. They pay anywhere, really. <laughs> they will pay but, your bills. But yeah, um, oh look at uh, you know uh, Crimson Riot, Roxy Gun. Oh yeah, yeah. Roxy Gun Project is the day job that they pay. They pay their bills with covers, and then Crimson Riot is the 
we want to be a punk, pop punk band, and, and they're on tour right now, actually. Nice. I think they're Good on the way to, um, I think they're on the, actually, I think they're on the way to Illinois. No. Or they're in Illinois. I, oh, they're, they're ahead of me. I'm going there next week. They're playing right now. Uh, and they're, they're Room 6 alumni. Like, their first half dozen of my guests, they were, they were, they were, they were, they were, dozen am I? Crimson and Ryan. <laughs> So, I've done over 100 of these things now. Oh, okay, so <laughs> we're past seven. Yes. Um, so, yeah, by the time this comes out, I will have already posted and, and probably surpassed 100 actual interviews and performances posted. Nice. Yeah. Cool. And that's awesome. Thank you so much. By the way, thank you, everybody, who has subscribed. If you haven't, it's down there. You know what to do. Um, thank you, everybody, that's a patron on Patreon for the patron-only content. We have, you know, my, my good buddy, uh, former drummer, Whiskey drinking buddy, Sean Flume, my very first ever interview guest, helped me break in the channel, helped me figure out what it was I wanted to do. Nice. Shout out to Sean. Shout uh, out to Sean. He and I put out a, an audio podcast once a month called Two Brains, One Bottle. We used to, we would do reviews, whiskey reviews together, and then we would turn off the video and just leave the audio going for a whole hour uh, and just share a bottle. But now, he lives in Kansas City, so yeah. Two Brains, One Bottle. Sponsor me, Evan Williams. <laughs> but now we we both. You got to put room six. Sc- Scotty Williams. <laughs> but um, yeah, no. If you know, you know. But getting back to my point, thank you very much, patrons on Patreon. Thank you everybody who's bought merch on Room Six Shop. Thank you everybody who's picked up one of my CDs or just you know said a nice word in the comments. I appreciate you all. Thank you so very much. Those mean a lot. They do. Um, they say never read the comments if you're a YouTuber. However, I'm at the point where I have to, or I don't know what people yeah. think. I, I, I don't have a K next to my comments yet. Right, right. So <laughs> Once it gets there, then it's like, I don't even oh, have a K right. next to my views. <laughs> but thank you so very much. Um, please, you know, like, share, do all that stuff. Getting back to the interview. I wanted to ask, talk to me about the Short Bus Bomb Squad. Short Bus Bomb Squad. You have dug in and done your research. So. I have been called the next <laughs> Nardwar. <laughs> the next Nardwar. Okay, so Short Bus Bomb Squad mm. is a band that I was in when I was, uh, man, I want to say 16. It might have even been 17, but I think it was 16. And this is basically like an experimental grindcore metal band that I was in. And yes, I mean, of course like, it was. I mean, we would play like backyard parties, basement parties. And this was in Illinois. We're in Vegas where people don't have basements. In Illinois, everybody has basements. Il Noir. So I'm talking, yeah, you know, <laughs> Il Noir. <laughs> and uh, I'm just talking so many underage people just wasted and half naked or even completely naked. But we're all underage, so it's nothing to leave. Well... I was gonna say, wait a minute, back up. <laughs> it's extremely we're illegal. All, we're all underage, <laughs> but I mean, like, yeah, we were just so, so wild. But it was a, uh, it was kind of like a whole whole community uh, thing that we had in my in my hometown because, like, where I grew up, we really don't have a whole lot to do except figure out something to do with each other. And so we had like all these metal bands, and we would just make shows happen. It'd be in, like I said, somebody's backyard or the basement or wherever and we'd all just be messed up just playing rock and roll and so I was the guitarist in that band I was the rhythm guitarist and then we had keyboardist lead guitarist vocalist bassist and a drummer Mm -hmm. and uh, I think uh, to this day maybe one or two videos remain online somewhere of us playing somewhere and uh, there's one video I can think of where you can see me like 16 years old playing at a bar and all I'm wearing is boxer briefs Oh, so you almost Red Hot Chili Peppers. Almost Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> and we're just rocking out our short bus bombs. Hey, I'll tell you what. There's been some gigs in Vegas in the summer. You're just like, I wish I could just take it all off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm playing a that's cover gig, gig in a casino. <laughs> yeah, that's every gig I play out here. Nice. <laughs> it's so hot. This one. Right, well, we're almost done. Okay. Um, and again, thank you for hanging in there. What an ask. Let's talk gear. Gear. Let's hear it. Okay. Now, we don't have an hour, so don't go too crazy. But when you are go too crazy, if Exist More <laughs> is playing a show, what are you rocking? Uh, okay. So if I'm playing drums, right now I have a Yamaha Stage Custom Yamaha uh, drum kit, which I got because I like the size. I like for my drum kit to be really tight, so it's a little smaller than your average kit. And then my cymbals, I'm actually sponsored by uh, Orion Cymbals out of uh, Brazil. And uh, I highly encourage everybody to look up 
Orion symbols because uh, they're really trying to break the market here in America. It's like they're really high quality symbols and they're not like a Zildjian or Sabian price yet. So this is like a great time to get on that way. And then when it comes to when I play guitar, uh, my main guitar that I play, which I'll be playing in some songs in a bit, uh, is a uh, it's an Ibanez, which I love Ibanez because I love to play like my math rock mm. melodic stuff. My acoustic cutaways Ibanez, love it. Yeah, and Ibanez is great for people who love to keep their fingers moving, not just playing chords. But I mean, they're great for chords too. But Ibanez players, you know what I'm talking about. I've seen you play chords. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have a uh, I have a head rush pedal board which is basically like it's like a uh, it's like a DAW for any audio people out there who know what that means it's basically that for guitarists digital whole, audio workshop yep it's like a digital audio workshop for guitarists it's just right there everything it even mimics uh, amplifiers and microphones so you got it all right there so that's what I usually will play through for those that's types pro of pro tools for your feet Pro Tools for your feet, exactly. You can use that. Hey. And then I'll rock, uh, I'll rock bass uh, with some people. I don't have a whole lot of bass equipment right now, uh, but I do love Ibanez basses. Those are a lot of fun. So currently you're borrowing someone's bass or what? Uh, well, I have like a cheapo bass that I play right now, and it's actually being painted. I have two guitars. Uh, one is already painted, and one is being painted by my favorite local artist from Vegas. His name is Recycle Propaganda. Oh, right on. Yep. Familiar so, with the name. Yeah, so that one's being painted for me right now. Uh, however, in the future, I really want to get like a five string probably by Ibanez because I love five string basses. And uh, so that's that pretty much sums up a lot of my gear for when it comes to playing the instruments, drums, or guitar, or bass. Nice. Right on. Um, we have one more question and then we're going to go upstairs. So stick around. Zip, zippity, zip, zip. <laughs> this is, this is, my, Perfect my, time this is my kid, by the way. Say hi to Ari. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Running away. And like that, <sighs> you're gone. Right here, Brussels sprout. You Brussels sprout. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> of all the cabbage family in vegetables, you had to call me a Brussels sprout. Hey, I like Brussels sprouts. You know, with a little bit of brulee action. You know, bacon. It's nice. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Last question. You made it. You ready? I think I'm ready. Okay. We'll see. Normally, I ask of all my prey. Let's pretend we're talking a little you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's pretend we're talking a little you. We're talking to new musicians. What is one piece of advice you would give? But that, I've kind of, I've kind of gotten all the answers. And don't say change your strings. But instead, I'm going to ask change you. Change your damn strings. <laughs> we, we are going to actually uh, start a fight in the comments. Ready? Let's hear it. What is one thing you wish would change about the local music scene? The local music scene. Hit it! Mm. Drive up your local market value. Uh, a lot of a lot of artists. I think every single artist is guilty of this. You're eager to get gigs, so you'll accept them all for free. You're gonna notice down the line when you get stressed out because you're putting out all this work and getting no payment in return, all these hours, no bills being paid. Eventually, as you get older, you're gonna get tired of that. However, like doing all those gigs for free, that's kind of what lets businesses know that they can keep getting artists for free. So the more that us artists step up and say, like this is work, we, we. Uh, deserve to get paid for this work the more all of us will get paid for this work so if you want to make money off of what you're doing make sure that you establish the fact to anybody that you're playing with that what you're doing is worth money very much so um i remember years ago seeing a post on uh, facebook i think it was years and years ago you know joey vital sounds a little familiar guitar singer songwriter in town Still playing. Um, mostly makes his bones with, with covers, but he's he's got original stuff too. Um, I used to host open mics, and he was he was a regular lot, and he's really talented. Joey, if you're watching this, hi I, Joey, you're really talented, and I agree with this sentiment. He said years ago, musicians, please stop taking gigs for less than a hundred dollars. And and that's my bottom dollar charge. To be right. honest with you. Um, <laughs> and when I did the showcase, it, I only called it a showcase. Normally, if you're a musician. You hear a showcase, it means I'm playing for what? 
free. Exposure. Exposure. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and what it's I basically free. <laughs> and so I, I wanted I only called it a showcase because I'm showing I'm showcasing five acts that have been on room six. I didn't know what else to call it. Summer showcase is alliterative, it rolls off the tongue. But I paid them. They got a free shirt. And they got free Chiba Hut. Nice. Thought it was a good deal. And everybody that brought merch that day sold at least one piece of merch. Including me. So win, 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 baby. But don't, whatever, you're, if you're a creative person at all, doing any sort of creative outlet, don't under, underestimate your value. And you probably are, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, With everything that you do, you're telling the world around you what you're worth. So if you're constantly doing what you love to do uh, mm. for free, you're telling everybody that you don't want anything in return for that. Which, if you honestly don't want anything in return for that, then you're going the right path. But, I mean, let's be honest, like, it's getting to a point in civilization where, like, money is just becoming such a requirement that, like, time is money. So if you want to spend your time doing something that you love, mm-hmm. make it worth something. That way you're doing something you love in order to afford your bills. That's right. And if you're watching this video, I'll be sending you an invoice. I'm just kidding. Yeah. But uh, You owe us for watching this. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, thank you very much for watching. Stick around. We're going to see him upstairs performing, I think, a little bit of everything all of the time. Uh, upstairs some in Destiny's six. Child some uh, wow no. <laughs> might be some Nirvana hey who knows yeah who knows maybe a little but bit. in the meantime stick around we'll see you upstairs sir cheers thank you for having me my brother ching and thank you shout out to Jay Nice for making the beat Bad things happen to good people, and good people do bad things once in a while. So excuse me when I smile as bad people do good deeds. Regardless of how you and me have been told to feel, there isn't really any one pure way of living. That sense of inquisition makes us feel born to existence. So we try to make the outside conform to our own inner vision as if we owe it to existence. To cast a throne upon its wisdom, then bestow upon a henchman to make sure everyone is hip to it. The road to hell is paved with good intention. An act of moral violence creates a real contradiction, yeah. So I am more careful the vibes I carry and the eyes I stare with For that I will bear witness to any lies I issue And the prize they implement every time They mislead you and I into these juvenile illusory lines And I'd apologize and spike if my advice But I can only handle myself one at a time What? I try to make sense of the state of affairs And became aware that the state isn't there unless I'm here What goes up must come down That's how the cycle goes around Every joy has some disparity underground So we can be these sensations Create these equations to get us closer to the quasars and make us feel apart from all of this. Maybe one day along the process, we'll notice we always gain from our losses. Nirvana. Breathe in to breathe out. I guess I had to go insane in order to figure me out. I had to be the savior who delivered the doubt because I'd never know my strength if nothing ever called it out. Yang to the end, saying to the end, my pain is a gift. I've hurried things along to find the patience within. In a ways I find the pleasure is a painful intention So I don't lord upon desires as if I crave their attention And that's love That's love I tried to make sense of the state of affairs And became aware that the state is in there And that's how I'm here What goes up must come down That's how the cycle goes around Every joy has some disparity underground So we can be these sensations And create these equations To get us closer to the quasars And make us feel apart from all of this Notice we always gain from our losses, that's That's nirvana. nirvana.
I am prepared to be with nobody else but me. I used to have all these friends, now I walk here alone. And I used to hate it, but now I'm just used to it. My safe place. My safe place. My safe So nowadays I wonder who I can trust Don't even like to be touched Please don't approach me ulterior motives disgust me And that's all I see That gleam in the eye when they want something from me I'm nice so they always will ask me for something But I'm empty Please do not reach for my glass I'm waiting for winter to pass I've frozen and God knows I'm already so close to broken Please, I need this for me A little peace A little space for me to breathe Can't you give me that at least? Last year I gave all my time away To a girl who made me feel like I'm disgraceful And all I did was care for her and her kid And that's a unique form of torture Accusations I never look forward to Don't even know who I am anymore It's cruel I am prepared to be With nobody else but me I used to have all these friends, now I walk here alone And I used to hate it, but now I'm just used to it My safe place My safe place My safe place My safe place I want to thank Exist More for dropping by. It was a great interview and a great performance. If you want to know more about him, definitely check the links down in the uh, description. 
Also, please like and share and subscribe. Really, that's all I ask. Ring the bell and um, remember to be amazing. Oh yeah, and if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. And if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, you know what to do. Click down there and don't forget to ring the bell. Um, yeah, remember to be amazing, like I said. And we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. ba da ba ba da ba ba <laughs> There's always one.